back, and we are live from Vegas. It's Eddie Trunk. This is Trunk Nation talking rock with you every day. Faction Talk, Sirius XM Channel 103, or anytime on the Sirius XM app. Joining me now in the studio here, a guy that's actually been here once before uh, when he was on tour with Dirty Honey with his band Mammoth WVH. It's good to welcome back Wolfgang Van Halen. Wolf, good to see you. Great to be here again. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for making the time. And, uh... Man, a couple of your bandmates are practically live here, but it, you know, in fits and kerns. But uh, we finally got the man himself, Miles Kennedy, here. Good to see you, buddy. It's good to be here. How That's you right. doing, man? I'm good. How I'm, you holding up? You know, I'm, I always I'm worry holding. about you. Well, thank you. I do. I always think about you. I drop you a text every once in a while. Miles is a fragile flower. <laughs> nah, I don't mean it like that. I just mean you're always like. I hear that from people too, and honestly, it kind of annoys me a little bit because everybody's like. My God, you're in a million directions. You're always go, go, right. go, go. And, you know, how do you do it? How do you do it? And I said, I know, I just do it. I feel like it would be bad if I didn't do it. Right. But then I realized I just said the same thing to you. I worry about you because you go from one thing to another. <laughs> you're like my mom. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I worry about you. I check on you every once you in a do, while. You do. And I, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. But, you know, I think there's something you said when, when you're constantly going. And, you know, my philosophy, I heard this years ago and someone said, you know, being a musician, it's like it's like being a shark. Once you stop swimming, you know, you sink. So you just got to keep going. You got to keep just uh, rolling. And, um, you know, that's just all I've known forever. Are you one of these guys that you feel like, like, if you let go of the rope a little bit, that, like, it's going to slip away? Sure. Yeah. Do you have that? Yeah, absolutely. Because I do, too. Yeah, right? Right. Like, it's <laughs> I got to do something every day because if I don't, it's like, I'm going to miss out on something I could yeah. be doing. And it's like... I'm 58. This is my 40th year doing this. Wow. So wow. I'm like, I'm in my twilight, if you will. So I want to just ride it for all <laughs> oh, I can. Oh, you're just getting started. Oh, come on, man. But I wonder about that because, I mean, you before everybody knew who you were, Mayfield 4 and all the stuff that you did before Alter Bridge and, and joining Slash and all of that, like you, you put your work in, you know, you put I a know. lot of time in. Yeah. I mean, it, the funny thing with, with me is, I mean, I started playing in bands in 1986 so i mean i was at it for a really long time before things finally started to happen right you know and i think that's so that's part of why i, I work so hard and, because i understand I, I once you you it takes you that long to kind of climb to where you want to go um you realize that you know well what if what if you start <laughs> and falling down the hill again and i'm like i don't really want to do that so i'm just going to keep hustling how's the pipes holding up fine no everything's everything's great Good. um i think when you saw i we saw you uh, when was that in it was early jersey it was early yeah. i think i had a nice little sinus infection going then so that was a little bit of an issue trying to dance around that but wolf and i have, we've got that figured out how we're gonna you know, get away from sinus infection <laughs> yeah so wolf how are you doing with all this because even though you're not i mean miles has three different things he juggles alter bridge slash solo mm -hmm. you you obviously singularly well he focused. doesn't sing them all at the same time <laughs> <laughs> but he goes from one to the other would you have one day off between slash and alter bridge yeah, more or less. he literally had one like one yeah, day no of course but for you um this whole experience of doing, you know, launching Mammoth WVH, all the success, everything that's happened so quickly. How, how have you felt about everything? I mean, it's got to feel amazingly rewarding to have all this going on. Yeah, it's uh, it's really crazy to see uh, just, you know, after all the work we've been putting in for the past two years to see uh, it come back during the shows, like people singing and, and, and actually knowing the words and being stoked. It's a, it's a really weird uh, amazing feeling to see you know the the time you put in being uh you know given back to you and, and what's it like been for been like for you because obviously you toured with van halen and played bass and sang backing vocals and all that but this is a different thing this is your thing you're out front you're singing lead you're playing guitar you've even got i think a keyboard or pedal you know you're like <laughs> you're like a mad professor up there in the middle so how have you held up with all of that vocally and physically and everything yeah i've been i've been doing great i don't think uh, i've i've uh, you know had a moment yet he's knocking where, on my wood table <laughs> where i've been like oh damn i can't sing or anything like it it just uh when you get into the swing of it it just uh keeps going have you uh used miles for some counsel and advice at times he doesn't he does not need my <laughs> counsel. trust me he's got it he's doing just fine he's he's helped me out a lot for sure yeah. uh, uh i i i would come to him uh before uh we tracked 
uh, for Mammoth 2 for the vocals and stuff. And he, he gave me a lot of advice that really helped me figure out how to achieve what I wanted to do. Has the has the immediate success of Mammoth, both the the music, the recorded music, and the live stuff, has it, has it surprised you? Yes. <laughs> I mean, right right out of the gate with this. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's insane to see. Um, I think uh, what the the amount of ads we just got this week on the radio for for the new song oh, is like stupid. How like how much it's being requested and it's. Uh, it's very humbling and, and like, wow. So people actually see uh, merit in what I do other than just what my name is. And uh, it's... Well, your name is Wolfgang Led Zeppelin. We've established that. <laughs> you know, I had to change it back on Twitter because everybody thinks they're a comedian and it's just, <laughs> it gets to be too much, man. I just have to, it's like, okay, yeah, that's that was the joke. How I many did you have Led Zeppelin? You had Paul McCartney? <laughs> No, it was uh, 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 Wolfgang, Paul McCartney, and Wings. Oh, okay. I thought that was that was my favorite one, but people wanted Led Zeppelin, so you got to give the people Miles texted me; he was pissed. He's like, he could have went with Wolfgang Kennedy. You know, he really, <laughs> really, you know, he was almost in Led Zeppelin too, so yeah. he could have done it. <laughs> he jammed with Led Zeppelin. I still can't. Yeah, like, it's man. still hard to. Every time you tell me those stories, it's still hard to believe. That's just nuts, man. It's not. It's. I still don't believe. I, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, so let's like we're gonna go around the horn a little bit and then we'll take some calls from the audience if that's cool because i'd love to yeah. let them talk to you guys cool. but um miles give us the update so pawns and kings amazing record you know i Thank you. i saw you guys I, I actually didn't talk to you much in jersey because you were dealing with what you right. were dealing with but i the rest of the guys i spent a lot of time in the dressing room we were talking and it was funny because as soon as i went in mark said to me uh he goes here's the set list do you want to look at it? i go no I don't want to see it because they said I want to be surprised, right? Because especially first time I, I was, and I started thinking and I started being that annoying guy and I go, well, there is one song on the new album I really hope is on there. And Mark's handed me the papers. You want to look? I go, no, 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 I'm going like this. And I said, to, the song was Sin After Sin, right, by the right, way, right. which you didn't do that night. Oh, we didn't? No. Oh, they've been doing it. It's so good. <laughs> I'll do it for you right now. <laughs> exactly. But the thing is, is my point in bringing that up is I said to Mark, I said, you guys have a really cool problem now because you now have a ton of great records and a big, pretty deep catalog to, to kind of... Uh, figure out what you're going to do in the hour 45 or whatever it is right. that you're up there. So how's that gone as far as have you changed a lot of stuff in and out on, on the tour? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I feel like we could probably do it more, but um, it is, it's a wonderful problem to have. And when I rewind and think back to when we first started, you know, we, on the first record and we're, you, I don't know if you went through this uh, in, initially when you were doing like headlining sets where you're like, oh, we, we, what covers can we do, you know, trying to fill it out. So now seven records in, you have this plethora of material to, to pull from. I think the hard part kind of touches on what you just alluded to, which is annoying I mean, people like me coming in the dressing room. <laughs> exactly. That's, exactly. That's, that's the hard part. No. That's, Peace is broken, man. You're not doing it. <laughs> Fortress. Um, I think that, I think it's the idea that, you, if you have enough material, people are going to leave not hearing the song they want to hear. You know, and that's hard. It's and it's impossible. You can't. You can't. Right. Play, we can't play all seven records. Maybe we could try that eventually. Just right. do like a marathon <laughs> gig. But but um, no, it's a it's a wonderful problem to have. But when you think about it, when I think of Alter Bridge now, even watching the set, when I saw it, the it, 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 there are. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'd say roughly what maybe five six songs that are now automatics yeah. have to be there blackbird obviously yeah. watch over you has to so you have like when you put a set list together you're going to have what like a half a dozen that are just mandatories mm -hmm. right correct and then you build around that and then who does that is that basically you and mark or do the other guys chime in it's all of us we just kind of try and do it by committee and it's usually we usually have a fist fight and then that <laughs> rectifies the situation um no it's it's really easy actually we just have audibles so one night if we're going to do sin after sin then the next night we might do this as war we try to do something from the new record and and then it's like oh eddie's here let's not do sin <laughs> exactly <laughs> eddie wants to hear sin right. don't do that right well actually mark said the sub out was pawn i think the song pawns and kings for Sin after sin. He's like, if we do one, we don't do right. that. So he was telling me how that all right. works. So, and um, now you got Reno tomorrow. You're not playing here in Vegas, but you right. got Reno tomorrow. 
and then I guess a California date, and then this leg is done. Correct. And you get a little break. Is that mm-hmm. what happens? A little, little break. You get to actually see your wife. Power down. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. How long? I think about a month. Okay. Yeah. So just in time for you to go write another solo record? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one in the can already? Oh, well, I mean, there's plenty of ideas. It's just a matter of, you know, whether it's going to be that polka album I've always dreamed. <laughs> I still want the album that you didn't release. That's oh, the one I'm yeah, really yeah, interested yeah. in. Do you know about that, Wolf? I've you may heard, have heard I've it. heard rumblings of it. Did yeah. you hear it? No, I have not. It's like his secret record, you know. <laughs> it was his first solo record. He's never put it out. Yeah. Has anyone heard it, Miles? Hmm. Yeah. I'm, you played it for anyone? I've played well, a handful of people. Yeah, a handful yeah. of people have heard it. And right. um, yeah, maybe one day we'll figure it out. All right. So then you guys, and we're going to get to what Wolf's doing, but because are you, are you on the second leg? of Alter Bridge dates is Mammoth on well they, this one is kind of the second leg mm-hmm. already I think there's yeah. a third leg that, there's May coming yeah, up or something that we're, right we're not gonna be on we have to go to Europe okay so just then you guys do that who's your support on that do you know in in in, in America in, in America seven dust yeah okay which is gonna be that's awesome yeah I know now I'm excited but I mean seven dust you know they're they raise the bar from a live perspective oh yeah yeah they're tough to follow yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. no i think you guys will do just fine that's a great bill and then um you guys alter bridge goes over to europe right you do the yeah. summer festivals yeah, and the, all that we do the summer festivals yeah, i think we meet up a couple times yeah. out there over there okay yeah. and then um another u.s run or no for alter bridge i think we're trying to figure that out yeah we're okay trying to, put, trying to put that together we've been really um Pretty blown away on on this uh, U.S. portion. Uh, it, it feels it really kind of like what he was talking about with you know his his, his music. You know, we we feel like um, very humbled by the by the response and the amount of people are showing up. But my theory is a lot of it is because <laughs> of these guys. Honestly, I mean, I'm not. I'm, I'm serious. Well, it's a great uh, bill. I, I mean, like it, it is a great bill. Yeah. It really is. Both bands are are great, and obviously, yeah, it's aligned perfectly i mean it's a great set across the board and i went to that that show in jersey i was texting you guys and kevin i mean it i'd never been i was a shoehorn in there i mean it was nuts packed i've been to that venue many times it was crazy so that's really really awesome to see all right and so just in wrapping up with you miles on like the future stuff has there been talk of doing anything with Slash again? Do you have anything lined we're, up there? Yeah, we're trying to figure all that out. And, you know, once again, it's just all the, the the moving parts. You know, everybody's got all their various bands. <laughs> you know, right. so it's like where do you find the window? So just trying to figure it out, make make something happen. Because I feel like the four record I liked a lot. I loved the songs on it, and I feel like everyone kind of got a little shortchanged on that just because there was such a short window for you guys to play. So there was like a really it's kind of like what happened with Walk the Sky too. Yeah, because of COVID. Yeah, where where there was it's it's true. it's almost like this tour is also kind of still a continuation. Yeah, of that. and it kind of happened with my second solo record with Ides of March too. It's just there were so many, and it, it got to the point as a writer where you're like, gosh, you put in all this work into making these records, and then you only get to tour it X amount of months. So that that's 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 been hard, you know, given the circumstances we've we've all been dealing with over the last few years. But you know, it's all right. Yeah, we'll survive. So, Wolf, what's your schedule then? This wraps up in a couple of days, and then do you go right to Europe, or you have more stuff here? No, we get uh, uh, a little break. I think like two weeks, and then we got to go back in rehearsal. Um, having the guys come out, we'll be just rehearsing up at fifty one fifty, and then we have to go to Amsterdam because we're opening for Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got dates in America with Metallica too. Yeah, that's after all the Europe stuff. You're laughing like as if. As in, it's surreal to yeah, say that? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and that's just a, a one-off, and then we come back and get another little tiny break, but I'm sure uh, my manager, Tim, has has unknowingly, uh, to me, filled that with uh, a lot of work to do. <laughs> and then, uh, um, then we go to Paris, I believe, is the first show back, and then that's the start of a, a big over in Europe for like two months stuff. You now, know. we know that what's happening with the band and your music here in America, it's been very embraced by radio, and you've toured here a lot, and you got this new record coming, which we'll talk about. But um, 
what's the what's the response been to what you've been doing outside of the U.S. in places like Europe? Is it do you, do you have a read on that? As yeah, to how it's if, gone? if anything, it's uh, I've noticed more of a of, of a response. Uh, really, the you know having the amazing opportunity to open for for AB over there uh, last year, the crowds were were crazy. Uh, like the places were practically filled by the time we we went on, and we were the first opener. Uh, Hailstorm granted, it was, was a great, too, it was a right? great bill. You was know, it, it was, Hailstorm? It was us, Hailstorm, and all. I, I told that's an amazing bill. Um, but yeah, it's like the place was already packed by the time we went on. So it's like the people were were ready and they wanted to see it, and uh, that's amazing because it was the first time we'd never even been out there. Yeah. So. So you you're just gonna just roll as far as dates wherever they are in the world and oh, yeah, be out got, there for as long as we've you got our out next there. Uh, year and a half pretty much much planned i don't think i've ever known what i was doing casually uh <laughs> next summer let alone knowing that we're going to continue opening for metallica <laughs> you're giddy when you say that <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, like, it's, it's surreal to say right it's gonna be crazy you know those guys I've met James and I've met Lars and that's it. Yeah, they're great Both people. Both very nice guys. Great people. You know, they did a, a show. My history, I started working uh, early on as a kid for their original label, Megaforce. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, the owners of that label passed away recently. So Metallica did a show in Florida uh, late last year where they played nothing but the first two records as wow. a tribute to the label that started them. And sadly... Only me and one other person are left from that era alive. So they asked, they flew me down to go out on stage and speak prior to them coming out. Wow. So I went down the day before and I hung out and I've known them all for a long time, but we, you know, Lars is like, you got to do this. And I was like, okay. And, you know, total like, I mean, you guys are used to this doing what you do, but for me, a total like, you know, okay, here, so here's the plane ticket and the car comes and you get out and the van's there and they hand you your laminate <laughs> and here's your room key and here's your catering. I'm like, this is fucking awesome, you know? <laughs> and uh, then here's the whiskey tasting you can go to with Lars if you want to have some of the black and whiskey. And then they come to the sound check and, and uh, it was funny because I was watching those guys sound check. They had it closed to the public, but they said for me to come in. I'm sitting on the side of the stage and they were playing nothing but the first two records. And they would get up after every other song and like Lars would be shaking out his hands going, Jesus Christ, what was I playing as a kid? And <laughs> Kirk's coming over to me. He's like, I don't even remember playing half of this shit. You know, they were trying to get it all back. But such great guys and so in touch with their their roots and their history and my like I've done a ton of stuff over the years, but my knees were knocking out there in front of Metallica. Just really? Cause, well, because you know everybody in that audience like, fucking play Fight Fire with Fire, shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> right. But it was really important to them that they, that they had me or somebody go out there and explain the reason for the evening. Because the most people are there just to hear the old shit, you know? Right. But to explain the significance of it, what it was about, which... I didn't get shit thrown at me, so I guess I figured it out. Okay, you, success. You 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 brought up fire, fire with fire, and I, I'll never forget when I was a kid. Um, I you I heard, I wanted that record for Christmas. Ride the right? lightning. Yeah, and uh, so my grandmother, my sweet grandmother, was like, "Oh, I'll, I'll get you, I'll get you that record for Christmas." So she, so she gets, and she, oh, but I'd like to listen to it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so we start, we press play. And we're sitting in my bedroom with my my boombox, and it starts out that beautiful, yes. kinda, you know. And she's like, "This is this is beautiful, Miles. I love this." And I'm like, mm -hmm, "Wait for it, <laughs> wait for it." And then just that like, volume swell, boom. <laughs> And I'll never ever forget the look on Grandma's face. <laughs> she lasted like thirty seconds, and she was gonski. It was it was great. It's not as big of a thing, but I worked in a record store for many years, and it, when Extreme had that huge hit with More Than Words, we would right. sell box loads to housewives. I want that beautiful acoustic song, and they take the record, and the first song on that record is a song called Decadence Dance, with a big heavy mm -hmm. Nuno riff. And uh, they all come in like, this isn't the record I want. And I, well, it's only track four. The rest of the record's a rock band. And like, you don't know how many we took back. Like, people insisted, like, well, then just give me the single then. Well, I don't want all this noise. Uh, it was really, really funny, actually. So, Wolf, let's talk about this record. First of all, let's talk about the video, which is actually a film. It's like, I mean. We edited a lot out, too, and it still ended up eight minutes. 
Oh, you should have left every... Do the director's cut, man, because who cares? It's on YouTube. It is great. Tell me about putting that together. Uh, we had that idea for a while. I knew after uh, the Don't Back Down video, where if uh, anyone's unfamiliar, it's uh, of all me being the band and everything. And I knew that the next video, I was like, oh, I want to fire me <laughs> and bring bring the, the live guys into it just because I love them and it, it's a good time. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how it, how it rolled out. We did the treatment with, uh, uh, with Gordy who, uh, who directed it. And I think it turned out really, really well. I'm really proud of it. It's awesome. So I, I mean, I put, I put it up for, uh, for an Emmy or something, man. I mean, the <laughs> acting in it is, uh, it's Garrett, isn't it Garrett? The first guy Garrett that, blew us away. Garrett yeah. kills in it. And he, we have so much footage of him just being hilarious and me breaking like so <laughs> many times. Like we just said, Hey Garrett act drunk. And he just he fucking went for it. He he every every day before the video came out, I was just like, oh, dude, ready. You're going to be a star. You need to get an agent. <laughs> <laughs> but you were brilliant. Like with the, I love it when you're trying to do the finger tapping part. <laughs> And you're sweating. <laughs> yeah, and, dude. No, that was so funny because Gordy was next, was like right in front of me, and he sprayed me so much with a spray bottle to make it like I was. Yeah. He wanted it very uh, whiplashy. Oh, it 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 really worked. I mean, <laughs> I think that's why I look. I think that's one of the best videos I've seen in a long time. And I remember you showed it to me in the dressing room a few weeks ago, and I was yeah. just like, "This is." I mean, I had to hug you after I saw it because I was like, "This is the this is great." You know, this is just absolutely astoundingly good. But a lot of it was your all your guys' acting chops. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> not you kidding. Guys are a bunch of it was good. You know, they, it seriously was the scene at the end where you walk in on your own band playing, <laughs> and you're like, uh, "Guys, uh, you come." I go, uh, "What is I go, my dog? What, I overslept or what, something." What is this? <laughs> it, we, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, initially, I think uh, the first take was just like, who the fuck are these guys or whatever. <laughs> but I was like, let me do one where it's like really emotional. And that's the one that we, <laughs> we went for. It's great. And then what about the scene with the uh, the guy with the pizza? Oh, Ronnie. Yeah, who, our who? bass player. Oh, that's Ronnie? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so because you actually stopped the song. Yeah. And he comes in with the pizza. And a really part. important part, too, because it's about to go into the, the, the thrashy part. But I thought it was just a really funny idea. To just have him walk in and be like, uh, pizza for ma mammoth. <laughs> mammoth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the cool thing, like, about doing videos now, I would think, is that you can do them, you, you can really stretch out and do what you want to do, and way more affordably than back in the day when mm. people would drop <clears throat> half a million dollars on a video budget. I mean, you, I'm sure that was way more affordable, but the other thing about it is you don't have this pressure, like, Oh, I can't do an eight minute video because MTV is going to cut it down to three and a half. Let it let it go, man. Why yeah. not? Right. Well, it's it, it's important to to have a sense of humor and to not take yourself seriously. Uh, yeah. So it's just a it was a good time. I'm really, I want really the director's cut, man. I can't wait to see what's in that. You got to do that. Yeah, it'd be fun to put together like a, a blooper reel or something. Oh, yeah. So the record is out on August fourth, um, Mammoth Two. My uncle Pat's birthday. Uh, Uncle, is it, was that by design? Coincidentally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the record's out on August 4th, still a bit down the line. Yeah. The single is out now, and the, this first video, another celebration at the end of the world. You, on your first record, put a lot of it out in advance of the album actually coming. I think there was anywhere from four to six songs, actually, for the whole record actually dropped. Are you going to, being that the record's not out till August, are we going to get a lot more songs or no? I think you'll you'll get a little taste before before it drops. Yeah, for sure. Because I was just, I had Matt from Avenged uh, on my show on Tuesday. They haven't made a record in like six years. Their new tune is killer. Yeah, but he, their last record, I don't know if you remember, but he they did something really different. They didn't tell anybody they had a record coming. And they just showed up and put a record out that day. Pulled the old Beyonce. Yeah. yeah, played on the roof of Capitol Records and all that. And we awesome. talked about it. There was a lot of controversy about that and, and that approach. And he was saying now that this song, he, he said on the air with me the other day, he said, if I have my way, this will be the only song that comes out before the record. But the label's pushing because it's about analytics and this and that and all this shit. Content, content, content. Yeah. So you, but everybody has a different view on that. W was the idea to put so much out in front of the full record your or the label's idea? I think it was a combination. Uh, I think it, at least for the first album, it was important to give people a taste of like what to expect because nobody knew what it was. Uh, so, but I mean, with this one, I think it's just uh, you know we live in a content-driven era, 
So uh, it's just important to kind of, you know, every now and then put a thing out and be like, hey, check it out. <laughs> Keep grease in the wheel. Yeah, pretty much. You know, throw a log on the fire. Where do you land on that, Miles? Do you think it should be like, do you like to just give a little taste and then the record? Or do you, you guys put out like on Pawns and Kings, you put mm -hmm. out good three, or, four songs, yeah, right? Three, four songs. Yeah, I think that's just the way of the world now. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm not pretty the norm. It. That's the yeah, norm. <laughs> it's just, you know, I think the days of, it is a content, it's, it's a content driven world. And you just got to keep reminding people you're out there, you know, so that's just the way it is. And Wolf, for this record, you know, there's that old adage that everybody says, your first record, you got your whole life to write. And if I'm not mistaken, stuff on the first record, there was a, that, because I, even before your record came out, I was hearing about it from people for years that telling me they heard songs or whatever. So it had been, and I know some of it you had actually held up just because of what was going on with your dad and his health, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the idea of that record, that really, that record for you really had a long time to sit and kind of ferment, right? This one, the material, did you write all in one shot? Was it all freshly written or was there a backlog as well? Pretty much, I think there's some ideas that were just kind of half-baked that I, I spruced up and, and, and finished, uh, but no, the majority of this uh, this new one was was fresh, brand new, came after the, uh, the first album type stuff. Mm. <laughs> so did that, the experiences of the first record play into what you wrote in any way? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, it, it, certainly lyrically, uh, it's way more of a, of a, uh, inward album. Like the first one I think was very outward. Um, but this one is certainly more, I'm, I think just reflects the, uh, the past few years and just very inward. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, when you went in to write it, tell me about how you, I mean, everybody knows you record everything on the records yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's a process in and of itself. But as far as writing, what, what's your process for that? Are you a guy that locks himself in a room and just does it? Or is it just, I'm grabbing the phone, I got an idea, I need my iPhone. And yeah, it depends. It's kind of just when it strikes. You know, I'll have an idea on the guitar, I'll just record it. And then uh, Elvis and I will get in a room and I, I just kind of be like, how about this idea? How about this idea? How about this idea? And he's like, that one is good. That one works. This one needs work. Blah, blah, blah. And then I try again. <laughs> And you just so, keep doing that. You just beat it up. So how many songs are total on the new record? It's a 10-song album. 10 songs. And writing-wise, how much time did you put in? Like, what was the... Uh, it was just cumulative Yeah, over time. Yeah, that's, that's tough to, to calculate, because over time, you're always writing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but in terms of, you know, I, well, the first album, over the course of uh, three years and a bunch of different uh, meeting up with Elvis uh, to, to do it. But this one took two months. Uh, before we went out to Europe with Alter Bridge, I had a month where we recorded all the music, got back, had a tiny little Christmas break, and then January finished it. So this was a lot quicker. <laughs> you know, so much made of the video, which we touched on, <clears throat> but the song is killer. Thank you. The song, is, the song kicks ass. It's so <laughs> killer. So I'm excited as, you know, for, I mean, I love the first record, but I'm excited where this is going. Direction-wise, would you say it's a little like this is, is this heavy. an accurate sample of where there, you're going? there are definitely some echoes of the first album if, if that's the, the the vibe you enjoy for sure uh but overall i think it's a heavier album uh i would like to correct uh this quote that has been taken out of context for me saying oh there are, there's a bunch of mushuga inspired stuff it's like no i, I love mushuga but there is uh there's only one moment on one song where it's like oh yeah i can see that that's super mushuga inspired but that's it. It's not like multi. This is not. I'm not. I didn't play any eight string guitars. All right, all right. <laughs> Miles, you like Meshuggah? Yeah. Every musician likes I mean, Meshuggah. What yeah. is that about? Because they're amazing. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't really know them. I you need don't to need get, to. You just need to listen to it. It just. I just. No. No. Not personally. <laughs> I mean, I don't know their. I don't know their music really. But I know every musician loves that band, and and mostly drummers. Is it a percussion thing? I don't know. It's a rhythm thing, I guess. And, and that's your biggest thing. Mm. You love playing drums the most, right? Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, writing wise, Miles, what's you you write on the road? I do. Um, I just started writing again at the beginning of this year. I actually powered down for the first time last year after after we finished Ponds. I was like, you know what? I, I just I need to stop writing for a while. Brain hurt. You know what? I just felt I needed to. 
I, felt, I was starting to feel like a lopsided person. I'd spend so many hours every day right creating, and that's that's what I love doing more than anything. I mean, uh, you you know how it is. The creative process is 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 the bomb, but I think that I just I needed to power down and refill the well. So once I reengaged with the creative side, um, I came to realize that it's kind of I don't know how it is for you. I love it and I hate it at the same time because it kind of consumes you. Oh. I don't sleep. Oh yeah. I, I, even as we're sitting here, ideas are going playing in my head. Your problem solving. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a fascinating. It's a. It, That's me, no matter what, though. That's really? how I am. I'm not a songwriter, but my mind doesn't stop. That's the whole problem. Yeah, yeah. You told you told me Slash once said to you, he looked at oh. you and goes, "You got a lot of traffic yeah. going on up there." You know what? That that <laughs> that was like the mo that was an important moment in my life. You know, we were talking. We weren't. We were talking about something. We were sitting sitting in the dressing room, and and I told told him this story about something that prior to when we really knew each other, but we were at an airport terminal in L.A. together, and and I I had this whole thing concocted in my. <laughs> <laughs> this whole story that I kind of manifested and, and he's listening to me, you know, tell, tell this. And he just kind of looks at me and he kind of takes his glasses and looks down and he goes, you got a lot of traffic going on up there. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And it was really like, that was an important moment. It's like basically just chill the fuck out, kid. <laughs> because he always comes off so chill. Yeah. I'm, I'm so like above all his talent and everything. I'm so envious of the fact that he's always just... You know, whenever he's always just like, yeah, man, you know, like no matter what's going on. I've been to his house when, when like when he was married and like kids running and madness going on around him. And he's just sitting there on the sofa with me on with the remote like nothing's going on, like tune the world out. And I'm like, fuck, I wish I could do that. Like I'm constantly like even here with it. Like I just flew from the East Coast yesterday. Three hour time difference. You think I hit the wall at like 10, 11 o'clock. And no, I'm like, I had to. Oh, Wolf and Miles are coming tomorrow. <laughs> gotta clean the house. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, Make sure they I, have some have, tea. Do I have water? Do I have do my prepared? You know, it's just fucking nuts. <laughs> I can't turn it off. It's crazy. But um, do you have? Uh, I mean, I know Pawns and Kings is still the current record. But when you write, like you're on the road, are you mm -hmm. and Mark writing stuff? Even oh, we're always separately creating. You know, I can hear him in his dressing room, and I'm working away. Um, and it, it, for for me, the I, it, after all these years of writing, what I've discovered the best thing to do is maintain perspective. And the way to do that is is to write and write and write and document the ideas, and then get away from them, and then come back and listen with fresh ears. Because if I spend a bunch of time on something, you know, days and days and days, then I lose my perspective, and then I end up chasing my tail. So I just like to stockpile, like, just, you know, I want as many ideas to draw from when it's time to make a record. I want, you know, 50 to 100 ideas, and then you pick the best 10. When you write sl uh, stuff for Slash and the Conspirators, is that, are you writing lyrics only? Lyrics and melodies. Lyrics and, and melodies. And if there's, look, if there's, uh, if, if, if I get a demo, a music bed, like, uh, was it Rivers Rising? There's a good example. Or it's a killer riff. And a, and a section that I thought, well, that, that would be a cool pre-course. And then I just kind of took a, took a piece and, and put some, you know, bad drum programming and a, and, and a guitar part. And then added the melody, which would end up be the chorus. And the da da, the river is rising. And Slash then took that and and then Slashified it, made it more something that he would play. And and but but most of the time the the music is done, and I just put the melody and the lyric on. So it. that's a huge difference, I would think, in your writing than for Slash versus in Alter Bridge, Absolutely. because Alter Bridge, I'm sure you you play guitar in Alter Bridge, and you're writing on guitar mm -hmm. more, right? You're writing music as well. Well, yeah, I mean, it, with what especially with this record, and in even Walk the Sky, I mean, it was basically like just you yeah you would just compose the, the music and then mark would comp compose songs and we would just um you know it, it used to be we would take individual parts and put them together and now it's now we're kind of showing each of us bring our six songs and then you know approach it that way but who knows maybe the next record we'll go back to the a, a diff, you know the older way of doing it the thing i noticed too with alter bridge is mark continuing to progress as a singer yeah and uh you know the, even in a song like sin after sin which i love where you're you guys are he's singing you're both singing mm -hmm. on that and then every song he has at least one lead vocal now and all that his confidence as a singer is just getting more and more and culminating with this sinatra stuff he's doing 
which is a singer. Both of you guys as singers, pretty amazing to see him do that. Mm -hmm. huh? oh, yeah, yeah. That's a badass. I mean, that's crazy to see. It's not something people would expect, but he's really... Uh, he was playing me some stuff that wasn't released yet the other day, you know, at that show in Jersey. And I was like, wow, I mean, he's got a whole nother thing going on. It's yeah, really he really, cool. I think it's really just, he really enjoys it. I think he, and I think that it's hearing how he studied Frank's inflections and his approach. I think it has really helped. Uh, it, it's, it's helped him a lot. I think it's really helped him evolve. So it's been great. Starting to look like him a little he bit. He kind of does look like him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, that's why he's not here right now. He's at Sinatra's old theater, Probably. like in a suit, trying right. to. <laughs> and I think he's, he's playing pinball, isn't he, Kev? He's out there playing pinball. Someone's going to go to the pinball. Yeah, there's a pinball, great pinball <laughs> yeah. museum here in Vegas, which I told him about. So I'm glad he's there because it's, uh, it's a really cool spot. They got all kinds of machines. All right, so let's do this. If you guys have a little more time for me, I want to do a quick break. And then we'll come back and let the audience talk to you a little bit and ask you guys some questions. Sure. Is that Let's cool? All right, yeah. good. We got, a, we got some time left to go on the show in this hour. We'll be back live from Vegas today with Miles Kennedy, Wolfgang Van Halen hanging out with me. Again, uh, they're currently on tour together, Alter Bridge and Mammoth, but only for a couple more shows. Reno tomorrow and then California somewhere tomorrow. Go online and check the dates. But there's more coming for these guys. We just talked about all that. So we'll be right back, and uh, we'll let you talk to them next on Trunk Nation, Faction Talk, Sirius XM Channel 103, and the Sirius XM app.